Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy of Zero Phase. My name's Eric, and this video will be for those who have purchased my uh, prompt generator. Uh, we're going to be doing another update here. Uh, I got some feedback on uh, some of the previous functionality that my uh, previous versions had, namely um, labeling uh, and adding the trending information. And so I wanted to go through this new version that uh, I've been working on, reintegrating some of that. And uh, we'll be integrating the mixing function as well, uh, I think, in the next version. That one's a little tougher to get working properly. So the way we're doing this, so I've had people say they don't want the labeling, other people that say they do like the labeling because it helps with filing purposes, that kind of thing. So what we've done is we've made it um, uh, a function, meaning you put in a command and it'll execute that. So you, by default, it doesn't have the labeling. Um, you can put the label function on there and it'll give each prompt a label. And uh, then the trending function is there if people want to use it. Um, I've been told that with the newer version, STXL uh, stable diffusion models, that it's not, um, doesn't have as much of an effect as it did in previous models. So uh, be that as it may, it is there and uh, is usable. So um, with this new version of the prompt generator, um, you are now able to uh, put in longer descriptions of things that you want to see. So you can just type out your thoughts um, and uh, just build it up in your mind what it is you're seeing. You don't even have to put it in order which is really cool. And so as an example here, let me, uh, I've, got a, I've got something made here that I kind of thought up. Uh, we're gonna drop this in. So this is the prompt generator. We're on version, uh, uh, this is my version 5.5.5. Let's drop this in here. So what we got a prompt for a professional portrait photo. So this is important in the context of the prompt generator. Uh, you need to let it know a prompt. So that lets it know, hey, you're engaging it to write a prompt. Uh, and then it'll follow what you're putting in after that. And then typically the next thing you want to tell it is what kind of medium you want it to be in, okay? Um, this really helps the prompt generator structure the prompt properly. And then after that, um, typically the format is, you talk about the primary focus of the image, so you know, kind of what some of the details you may want, um, then, start talking a little bit about the surrounding scenery, background, that kind of thing. And then you can add, uh, at the end, here's why I, I don't put any periods in this. So the prompt generator tends to work better when you're not putting any kind of annotation or, or punctuation, um, unless you're using the newer commands. So uh, at the end here, uh, I just add, you know, very right off the bat, uh, say, please add extra details about her facial feature uh, features. I guess we should probably put that in there. And her jacket and extra details about the lighting. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. And it should give us one prompt. I have allowed the AI through the instructions in the prompt generator to take creative freedom in a lot of things. So it's designating wide angle portrait photography and we are using the break command uh, in this as a standard, not after every emphasis, um, just at certain points. So what it's doing, we're putting the break command when it changes subject almost. So we designated the medium, break. And then we talk about the primary subject and details around the primary subject, okay? Break, and then we talk about the secondary subject. Uh, of the of the scene could be the background could be something else that it's designating as a secondary subject emphasizing certain features that for those of you who don't know the break command is something that's built into stable diffusion um, by default it actually uses it without you knowing it so when you are um, putting in a long prompt the the prompt generator the the model I, if, if I remember correctly, takes in 75 tokens at a time, and then by default, it automatically integrates the break, resubmits the next section of the prompt, uh, is 75 tokens at a time. What we're doing here, so it's a way of helping the AI refocus. And originally, I was using the break command after every like emphasis uh, format. So uh, it would actually give the person blue eyes or uh, implement the color that was 
that was needed at that point. But uh, after talking with some people and doing some research, it's really only necessary to do it um, when you're changing subjects or when you're going to start describing something else in the scene. Okay, just that's for your information. I think it's great. It works wonderful. So um, we got another break here. Then we start detailing the secondary subject, and then uh, we hit break, and and uh, now it starts talking about the lighting uh, and detailing the lighting. Okay, and then because this was a, photo a photograph, the prompt generator automatically uh, integrates or includes. Um, uh, camera and lens information. Again, m most images that get trained in the AI, the metadata includes information, especially with photographs, information about what was used to create that photograph, you know, the camera information. And this, r I found, really stabilizes the image and gives you really good uh, photographic or photorealistic images. And then uh, by default, it will come out and give uh, some more intricate details around the lighting based around like, you know, the camera. Other prompts when you're talking about digital illustration, painting, it'll customize these based on that, on what it thinks it needs for that to give it uh, a better lighting. So um, as you can see, we got one prompt on this. Um, and for those who want to see, you know, see it work, let's just copy that. Obviously, I've done it once before here. This is a slightly different prompt. We're going to paste that in there. Make sure we're not doing multiple prompts. And hit generate on this. I'm using the, uh, for this particular one, I'm using the Dream Shaper XL model. I love this model. It's kind of a good all round model. So I got everything um, with, uh, with the exception of the, uh, the shorts are not black, and that's fine. You know, you're going to hit some randomness with the AI and how it does it. So typically you just render out three or four versions, but it got the aviator jacket or the leather jacket, aviator jacket or whatever. Uh, smiling, blonde, wavy hair, and uh, very pretty. Okay, so another feature I want to go through, uh, this, was, this has been something you could do in all my prompt generators, is uh, uh, doing chain prompting. This is the beauty of using ChatGPT for this. Uh, let's say we want to change the person in the in the uh, prompt. So we're going to go ahead and copy this in here. We're just going to say change her to an African American woman and hit that. What it should do is rewrite that prompt, keeping all the basic structure, but it's going to intuitively change um, things that need to be changed when you change certain objects, subjects, whatever. And uh, again, that's what's really nice about using a prompt generator that utilizes AI especially ChatGPT. Now, I've used this prompt generator in um, uh, Claude.ai. It actually works. Um, I, I, I tried it in uh, a couple of the others. They don't work as well. Um, and it doesn't work on the local LLMs. They just don't have enough tokens to work with it. So as you can see, we got uh, what we were looking for. So, okay, so the next thing I want to go through here, uh, chain prompting works great. You can ask it to change things as you go down. But when you want to start or initiate another prompt, a new prompt, always go back to the first prompt and clear that out. That way the instructions always stay fresh in memory, okay? Next thing we're going to do is what's called multi-prompting. We're going to put in two prompts. So when you're doing multi-prompting, designate the number of prompts, so like two, four, five prompts, comma, and then you fill out the rest of what it is you want, okay? We're just going to do two prompts, oil painting for abstract steampunk machine with explosive design and colors. Give ChatGPT a second to wake itself up. And here we got two prompts. And uh, they're short but they have what they are supposed to have we can always re -render, re, uh, regenerate those if we don't like it some you know here's the thing sometimes because it's you know chat gpt it may not give you you know exactly what you want the first time it's what's nice you can just re-render re -render, regenerate it um i like that one there now one what i try to achieve with my prop generator is 
Um, trying to, I'm trying to get what I want like 80 to 90 percent of the time. So when I hit generate on this, it only gave me the one one time, but uh, I would say eight to nine times out of ten, that's what I strive for to just get what you asked for. Meaning, I wanted two prompts. So far, two out of three times, I got what I wanted. Um, so I could keep, and I, I do a lot of testing on this. Um, so, and, and it does, uh, I, I strive for, uh, for uh, reliability. Again, because you're working with ChatGPT, it sometimes will do that for you. So, um, now when you're working with multiple prompts and you're rendering multiple images, uh, you know, if it has the same beginning here, that's great because when it creates the folder, you'll get a folder with that name. But sometimes it may not have the same beginning and those pictures may end up getting put into different folders, which is really frustrating um, because uh, then you're having to search for it. You know, uh, sometimes I like going directly to the folders, not through like the image browser, you know, the, uh, the one that's built in or if you have a plugin or whatever. And sometimes those are easier because it organizes it better. But uh, this is what people ask me to re-implement is the ability to have the um, seven or just the ID at the beginning of the prompt. It doesn't affect the images or anything. So what I've integrated is a command called label, which instructs ChatGPT, the prompt generator, to include a up to, I think it's like a seven character label at the beginning. It's just random letters and numbers. And uh, it really does help with um, filing purposes. It creates one folder, so if you generate images off any of these. Now, I in the settings, I do tell it to only create a folder with the first like seven characters of the prompt. Sometimes I think it's like up to 15 characters. You can choose what you want. Um, with this, with mine, I only designate like the first eight characters. So it takes this, and that's what the folder name is. So I can just do a quick search or, or whatever. But anything I generate off of these will all go into the same folder. It makes it a lot easier to find, okay? Um, the other function I put in is called a trend function. Uh, some people use this, uh, again, because of the changes in the models, a lot of people don't anymore. So um, what you do is you put the command dollar trend at the end of the prompt. So a prompt for a digital illustration of a warrior in active combat fighting a large dragon. Okay. Um, it'll generate the prompt, and then at the very end, should pick a popular, well-known, uh, website known for the style of imagery that you're trying to generate. Okay, um, if we do, let's do a, uh, let's do four prompt prompts. Let it generate that. Yeah. The trend command can be a little. A little finicky, but most of the time it works. There we go. So here we go. We got DeviantArt, ArtStation, Behance, and, Inst and Instagram. Because a lot of the images these things get trained on come from a lot of these websites. So it does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, I, I have seen that difference, and so that's I do use it. Now, you can use these commands in concert with each other. So at the beginning of this, maybe I want to label these. Put label, four prompts. Digital illustration, blah, 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 and then trend at the, big, at the end. And here you go. You get the labeling. You get the trending. Um, and those are well formatted. Those are great. Okay. Uh, I will be, so I'm going to be releasing this uh, version today. Uh, we'll gradually be implementing some of the other functions back in that I had in some of my first versions of the prompt generator. One of them is the mix mode, which utilizes the, the mix function of stable diffusion and what I mean by that is the function that takes two words you could do you know something like this or two subjects or references uh, and uh, put them in uh, here Jen. and so this would be a mix format what it does it takes one subject and renders it for the first 30% of the render. So if you were doing, let's say you were doing uh, 30 steps, uh, it would probably do for the first 10 steps and then it switches to the second subject or reference 
and uh, starts rendering it utilizing that instead. So I have trouble getting this function to work properly. Um, like t yesterday, I thought I had it working great. Like it would implement the 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 uh, mix great within the prompt, just like it's supposed to. But and it, when I use the command, but if I stopped using the command, it was still it was still implementing uh, the mix function on random words. And so I gotta I gotta work on that one, figure out the logic behind that one. Anyway, so I I hope you enjoy this. And for those of you who are seeing this and are curious about my uh, prompt generator, I do offer it uh, at my shop. It's shop.zerophase.com. Um, you get you buy it, you get access. I mean, you can have access to our Discord server, so you can see what people are doing with it. Uh, but when you buy it, you get access to a secure channel, which um, uh, gives you access to any future updates for free. Okay, I am working on this almost all the time. I love working on this. It's it's a great. Uh, I'm a puzzle person, and developing this prompt generator has been. It, it takes a lot of a lot of energy, because uh, working with AI, it's I've told people it's like it's like trying to work with a drunk, emotionally destable, destabilized Vulcan. You know, there's a lot. It, it wants specific logic, but then sometimes it does things that just doesn't make sense. Uh, but I think I've got this pretty stable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this up in the secure channel for those who have bought it to get the newer version. And uh, then we'll uh, work on some of those other functions. Anyway, I appreciate you guys joining me today. Uh, subscribe and like uh, if you want to see more. And um, we'll talk to you later.